Hey guys, welcome back to the Culico YouTube channel where we do all things fabrication, engineering, and design. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to hammer form sheet metal. As you can see here, I've got a completely hammer formed motorcycle chassis. It's all chromoly 4130-071 wall. Each of these sections were all hammer formed. Now, we're not gonna dive into this chassis today. I'm gonna save that for a future video. The frame isn't completely done yet. The swing arm still needs to be built and a few other things, but once it's done, I'm gonna do a full video on how I hammer formed each section of this chassis. But in this video, we're gonna start small. I'm gonna show you how to hammer form, how it works, best practices, some tips and tricks on how to get nicer parts, and then we're actually going to hammer form a part so you can see it start to finish. First of all, what is hammer forming? It's hammering sheet metal around a buck that allows you to make almost any obscurely shaped three-dimensional part. So in this case, here's a part that I'm using for a motorcycle frame. It's radiused on both profiles, it has round edges, and you can see where it's tacked in the center line where this will get finish welded and this sheet metal is 071 chromoly and it was hammered around this billet aluminum buck on the table here you see five different parts we're going to get very specific here the first thing i'm going to show you is the billet aluminum buck here this is what you're going to use to hammer the sheet metal over now you can see my buck has a radius in the edges. You're gonna wanna put a radius in the edges of your buck so when you're hammering that sheet metal around the edge, it doesn't have a sharp bend in it. It has a nice radius to form around and it's gonna make your parts look nicer as well. The next part I'm gonna show you is the actual chromoly sheet metal piece here that is going to get hammered. I take this sheet and we're gonna lay it over the buck. In this case, I left about three quarters of an inch on both sides of this buck that this is gonna get hammered over the edge of the billet aluminum buck. I model all of these on CAD and I have them water jetted out. That's a very efficient, easy, fast way to make all of these parts. And I do the same thing with the sheet metal and this other part that I'm gonna show you here soon. Now you don't have to be as elaborate as modeling all this on CAD and getting it water jetted. You could bandsaw this part out on a vertical bandsaw in any shape that you want. You could even use like a jigsaw with an aluminum blade and cut your shape out that way. The point is just don't make it too complicated on how you make your aluminum buck shapes. But it is important to have a nice smooth side profile Take your time when sanding out these radiuses and try and keep them consistent and you'll be just fine. This third piece I'm gonna show you here is very important. This is kind of next level hammer forming. And what we're gonna use this for, this is like an additional buck piece, but we're gonna sandwich the sheet metal to the aluminum buck with this quarter inch mild steel part. Let me show you. Your buck, second, your chromoly sheet metal, and third, your sandwiched quarter inch mild steel. And when you have these fastened together really well, it makes your hammering of this flange a lot easier. You wanna hold the surface of that sheet metal down so it doesn't buckle up on you like this when you're hammering this edge down. The parts four and five are pretty obvious. These are hammer formed chromoly pieces that I hammered out of this buck just to give you an idea of what the parts look like before you actually tack or weld them together. See these holes here? I have the part drawn in CAD. I always extend it a little bit with my bucks and my sheet metal and I put these holes in so I can fasten it all together with quarter 20s when I'm hammering it. And you All right, this part is ready for hammering. Stay away from steel hammers at all costs, unless you absolutely need to use them. Because of course, the softest hammer you can get away with, depending on the part, the less finish work you're gonna have at the end. And the idea is to have no finish work. Most of the time, I would say 90% of the parts 
I don't have to finish at all. Like this here, this was just hammered. I didn't have to sand this. I didn't have to sand out hammer marks. It's because I used a rubber mallet and now I just sand this edge and it's ready for welding. So you're gonna consistently start working this edge over. Okay, go a little bit like that. Then we're gonna slide this over in the vise. Sometimes this helps to clamp these down on your fabrication tables and stuff, but I thought this would be easier to see when filming. Obviously I've got this block under there so I don't hammer it out of the vise. Try and keep it somewhat consistent. You know, this is about halfway down. So now we're just gonna finish it out. This mallet's pretty beat up. I've been doing a lot of hammer forming lately, so use a nicer hammer than this. But uh, this particular mallet has a real solid plastic on this side that is certainly uh, harder, more dense. Um, it moves the material easier. And the other side here is uh, softer, uh, rubber. So I like to finish the part off uh, with the softest mallet that I can. You can see how this works. This laid over the edge of that buck really nice. I don't need to hammer this other side down. I think you guys understand uh, how a basic hammer form part is made at this point. So here's just an up close look at the part I showed you in the beginning of the video. Uh, kind of a trick part. This required no shrinking, no stretching. You can see how uh, aggressive you can get with radiuses without using uh, extra tools. This is literally just same concept, one inch billet bucks, sheet metal over the top, hammered with rubber and plastic mallets. So you can achieve these parts with almost no tools. Literally a device to cut material um, and rubber hammers and mallets, and you can make this stuff. We're gonna end this video by building a little part here, a little bracket. I'm gonna show you guys how I built these little stanchions for the top shock mount here, because with hammer forming and any other fabrication, there's all different scales of projects. You know, you can hammer form big parts and you can hammer form little parts and I wanna show you the range that you can do. And I think it's fun and trick to hammer form little brackets and stanchions and stuff because it uh, gives your project personality. Uh, plus from an engineering standpoint, it's really strong um, and I think it's trick. So I'm gonna show you how we made these little stanchions. These are about three inches long. They're straight on the top and then you can see the bottom profile has a bit of a radius to it. And that of course was welded to the chassis and then coped and welded to the machine tubing for the shock on the other end. Here's our four little parts that we're gonna need. First, here's our little buck and the shape of the stanchion that we're going for. One inch billet aluminum with nice radius edges to hammer the sheet metal around. Of course, it has the holes for fastening everything together. We have the quarter inch mild steel buck to sandwich the sheet metal. And then we have the sheet metal 071 chromoly 4130 uh, for each side of the bracket that we're gonna weld together. Start with our straight side here. flip it around and do the radius side. Maybe a little bit more in here. I'll hammer out the other side and, and uh, tack them together. Okay, so now we've got our two halves hammer formed out. As you can see here, they're gonna come together like this
And here's our final part. Of course, it still needs to be trimmed or coped or whatever you're gonna do with it, but we use that billet buck to build this hollow 3D chromoly shape. That's gonna conclude today's hammer forming video. I hope you found this video informative and helpful and educational. I tried to be as transparent as possible on my hammer forming processes. Let's all continue to learn and build our skills together. And always, I'm rooting for you on your fabrication journey. And we'll see you on the next Culico YouTube video. See you later.